I'm here in Santa Monica. You know what this is about. Horcon, Arrow, Theater, American, Cinematheque, in Santa Monica, the Horcon, 7 a.m. to 7, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I'm gonna go get in line right now. This is like one of the things I get most excited about. This is only my fourth time. I couldn't go last year, I was in Japan. I couldn't go the year before that, I was sick. There's been multiple times I missed it, but I love this so much and I'm excited. And I'll share it with you guys right now. Ready? It goes back and back and back that way. Okay, the movie will be starting soon. The festivities will be here. And uh, it's just, you know, we're doing it. Successful 
sitcom from 1983, baby. I'm turning Kate Nally into Allie Kate. And it's all going to be washing machines, baby. Only one day. What's it? <laughs> what? I know, exactly. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to start it. And that's with Pope John Horton the 18th. Come on down. <laughs> for your immune system. I want to pray for your protection. I want to pray for your confidence and an absence of fear. Let us pray. Dear God, you come through me constantly. three dogwoods in my backyard and they all died. What'd you do to them? Nothing. I watered them, I pruned them, I talked to them, and they still died. You bothered them to death. Yeah, so <laughs> speaks a woman who had a dead petunia on her windowsill for three years. That's not dead, it's just resting. Wait till spring, it'll come back more beautiful than ever. Not this spring. Why not? I threw it away. <laughs> you threw away that petunia? Well, it only had one leaf on it. It only needed water and plant food. In a hundred years, why don't you put some water and plant food on me and see what happens? You owe me a plant. I'll buy you a dead one, save you the trouble of killing it. Just what you think, there's no one around who's caring. Everybody stick around because we're going to have some fun and look at this right now. If you want to get yourself an aquarium, we count on you. Tonight at Red Roof Inn, Bill stays in a business king robe Look at the space. and feels like a business king himself. Oh, Tina Kasky. Chances of me working are rough. Don't miss the redesigned, rededicated Red Roof Inn and a core hotel. Oh, 
Attention <laughs> catheter users. Outshines, outlasts it. Nothing. The Energizer even outlasted Dad. The Energizer. Woo hoo hoo! You'll be up all night doing your homework. Long life. Energize me. Woo hoo hoo! We'll be up all night doing your homework. These guys are doing the job, and when you build them right, you can back them right. That's why Ford Care coverage comes on escort, and now EXP. For two years, you paid nothing. Zip on scheduled maintenance and repairs. Virtually all you pay for is. <laughs> we interrupt our program to bring you this important message. <laughs> Mr. Vincent Baraba. <laughs> you and I have at least two things in common. First, like you, like everyone in the United States, my family and I will have to answer the 1980 census. In 80 million mailboxes across the U.S. Yeah. The census is upon them to help us find the way to show us how we're going so that we can understand what's waiting for the future, the future of our land. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Help your community get out. Funds are needed for jobs, schools, health care, and more. Answer the 1980 census. And all your answers are kept confidential by law. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Can we count on you? Can count on me. Can we count on you? You can count on me. Can we count on you?
in our remote. Oh. Don't miss the redesigned, rededicated Red Roof Inn and a Court Hotel. Dear God, this is a different kind of prayer. It is a prayer to win big. I pray that I am blessed beyond even what I can imagine in my human mind. In New York State, school buses are required by law to come to a full stop at all railroad crossings. So if you're following a school bus that's approaching a railroad crossing, you can expect the driver to stop anywhere from 15 to 50 feet before the tracks, as required by law. Prior to stopping, hazard lights may start to flash on the bus. They're your cue to start applying your brakes. After he stopped his bus, you can expect the driver to request silence from his passengers and shut off all heaters, fans, and so forth to listen for approaching trains. Where railroads and school buses are concerned, stop, look, and listen is the order of the day. This takes a little time, but it's time well spent. So don't be impatient with a school bus driver at a railroad crossing. He's trained to be safety conscious, and he's doing his job. Oh my god. Stop it on and that ain't cool. everyone. Bill. Bill. Brent. 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 Jeff. 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 Brent. Jeff. Bill. Jeff. 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 Brent. Jeff. Bill. Jeff. Bill. Jeff. Brent. Bill. Alex! Tonight at Red Roof Inn, Bill stays in a business king robe. Look at his face. And feels like a business king himself. Multitasking. Oh, Chances of me working are remote. Don't miss the redesigned, rededicated Red Roof Inn. And a court hotel.
Yeah, that's the right answer. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Oh, he's giving you Kojak cards, ladies and gentlemen. Tell you some Oscar Kojak cards. Thank you so much. couldn't make it all the way um it's at the last the end of prince of darkness by john carpenter it's really good i'm really liking it but i have an hour and 20 minute drive home so i gotta be wise um i'll share with you my thoughts of it in just a minute okay we're here for the horror marathon 18th annual horror con Orthon recap. It's 5.30 in the morning. Um, I'm driving home. So, I haven't been in four years. Okay, so before the pandemic. And right off the bat, I will say this. It was better before the pandemic. There was pizza. There was energy drinks that keep you going. There was a lot more candy throwing, like big bags of candy throwing out, DVDs, shirts, all kinds of stuff. And now you got some candy, Randy has candy, but they're just those little fun sized pieces and it wasn't that much. There was no movies, there was a couple shirts. Um, the skits are great. I love the interstitial stuff. I love the the little video packages. I loved all that stuff. That's really why I go. Um, but the actual production of it, I feel like, is not as good as it was. Maybe it's cost cutting. I don't know. But if you can imagine, like, how much pizza costs for however many hundreds of people could be in that theater you know it's a few bucks plus you're getting like monster energy drinks for everybody you know that, that starts to cost <clears throat> so I get it but the price has changed it was like 12 bucks 15 bucks now it's 30 bucks so you know price has changed and you know so there's that okay the movies Start off with dolls, then Frankenhooker, then Psycho 2, then uh, Faceless, 
then Prince of Darkness, and then the sixth movie, I don't know because I left. And we'll just go real quick. Uh, Dolls was pretty good. It wasn't great, but it kind of fun. I wouldn't have started with that. It wasn't the strongest, but, you know, it's got uh, Charles Brand or Charles Band, Charles Band, who's kind of like the puppet master, you know, the, all those kind of like doll horror movie guy. So that was kind of fun. And some of the special effects was cute. There, there was some funny, unintentional, I would say, moments in it, for sure. Um, the acting was all over the place. There's a lot of cheesiness to it. But, you know, for these movies, almost all the movies were cheesy except for Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness was pretty damn serious, but everything else, it was cheese fest. So, that's just the way that is. They're not going to show Alien, Shining, Jaws, those kind of things. Um, although they did show The Thing once, and they showed Christine before. So, they, they do show a serious movie, but not all the times. So Dolls was okay. Second up was Frankenhooker, which was just a trauma film. So there you go right there. It's trauma, so it was just it was just wild and out there and crazy and outlandish and unreal. Uh, but it was really good, actually. Well, it wasn't really good. The actress who played Elizabeth, the actual Frankenhooker, she was damn good. This young girl was just great. It was fun. It was raunchy. It is what it is. Third movie, Psycho 2. I've never seen Psycho 2. I've seen Psycho a million times. I've never seen Psycho 2. I had no idea what to expect, and I thought it was great. I really liked it. I loved the way it kept us guessing. I loved the way it was just like we didn't know what the hell was going to happen. That was great fourth movie was Faceless with Terry Savalas. Um, the ending was out of control. Ending was out of control in Faceless. Faceless was clearly a French film and I'm really curious if they had a whole nother like cut for the States because the way it ended was so crazy. Um, I'm like, I still... I need to go online when when tomorrow and try to understand what the hell was going on with the ending of Faceless. Um, not a movie I need to see again, but yeah, it was a it was a movie. It was a horror movie. Um, and then Prince of Darkness is badass, and I didn't even finish it. I left at the very end, and I just I need to get home. But uh, that was really cool. I really liked. I liked it. We're gonna, I might have to do a separate video just on that when I finish it, but um, that's it. It was great, I love it. it. As I said before, it's literally one of the things I look forward to every year. I would I would like to next year go all the way till 7 a.m. Uh, I just have to work out some things with the fam, but great time. Thank you for watching and uh, check it out, bye. <laughs>